So welcome to today's video. Thank you for watching. Today I'm going to be talking about menstrual cycles and female cyclicality. So let's get started. So what makes for a healthy menstrual cycle? I'm going to talk about five main indicators of a healthy menstrual cycle. To start off though, I want to make a little disclaimer. If you're watching this and you are on hormonal birth control, these five things will not apply to you. The reason for this is, is that if you are on hormonal birth control, you are ingesting synthetic hormones. These synthetic hormones, depending on what type of hormonal birth control you're on, will either be a synthetic version of estrogen and progesterone, or just a synthetic version of progesterone. So what ingesting these synthetic hormones does in your body is that it completely shuts down the production of your natural version of these hormones. So essentially, when you're on hormonal birth control, you do not have a menstrual cycle. Even though you may bleed, you are not cycling because you will not have the up and down of the natural rhythm of these hormones. It's important to note that taking the synthetic hormones do not replace the natural function of our natural progesterone and estrogen our body as women produces. They do not perform all the functions in the body. I think in general what we are taught is that estrogen and progesterone they're just involved in our menstrual cycle but that is not true. They perform a myriad of functions across the body and because your body stops producing its own hormones when you do decide to come off hormonal birth control it may take your body considerable time to start producing its natural version of these hormones again because it's so not used to producing these hormones and it may take quite a while for your body to find its rhythm in that again and you will have missed out on the health benefits of having these natural hormones being produced in your body whilst you've been on hormonal birth control. Although I fully appreciate that hormonal birth control is a very convenient option and it might very well be the very best option at certain points in your life, I think it's important to know all the facts and make an educated decision. That's what I've tried to do just to give you a little overview of what hormonal birth control does and what I think is that to have a healthy menstrual cycle you need to be fertile that is a sign of optimum health so all the five signs I will talk about they don't really apply to you when you're on hormonal birth control so although it might be nice to learn about it just realize that you can't look for those signs in your body because you don't have a cycle so you can't see those signs but it's important to know that therefore it might not indicate anything about your overall health so then to start talking about the five signs so the first sign is ovulation so to have a healthy cycle you are looking to ovulate almost every single cycle when I say cycle I mean from the first day you bleed to the last day before your next bleed that is a cycle from bleed to bleed Something that a lot of women don't know is that just because you bleed doesn't mean that you ovulate. Ovulation is the release of an egg and that would allow for implantation. So sometimes your body tries to ovulate but it doesn't succeed and eventually it will still shed its lining which causes a period. When you bleed, uh, so technically a new cycle starts but you haven't released an egg, it's called an anovulatory cycle. Although these are normal to have sometimes, especially if you are a little bit older, in a healthy menstrual cycle and what that looks like you'd be looking at ovulating almost every single cycle so the second indicator is about length of your cycle so a healthy cycle length is they say about 25 to 35 days in length you have probably heard women have a 28 day cycle and you ovulate on day 14 that varies greatly it is a little bit like asking 30 people who has the average height even though that is technically the average you might only see about three hands of 30 women go up because height does fluctuate a lot it's an average so if you have a longer cycle or a shorter cycle than 28 days that is perfectly normal just as it's perfectly normal not to ovulate on day 14 what you want to be looking out for though is extremely short cycles or extremely long cycles especially paired with irregularity what is important in terms of cycle length is how it relates to all the other four signs of a healthy cycle so if you are regularly ovulating and all the other signs that I will touch on are perfectly healthy as well. But for example, you consistently have a cycle of 23 days, that might be absolutely fine and that might just be your normal. So the third point is a healthy period. What does a healthy period look like? Approximately somewhere between three and seven days and you are likely to see bright red or maybe slightly darker red blood. You might see some clots 
or bits of tissue in it, but not overly much. You might experience some cramping, but not overly much. If you have a really, really light period or extremely light in color as well, and it looks more pinkish, that might be something to think about. Same if it's really brown or really, really dark and really clotty. If it's really heavy as well, that might be something to look out for. And any spotting before or after your period frequently. For example, you start spotting a day, two, three days before your period starts, or two, three, four days after your period ends, you're still spotting. Those might be indications of a slightly less healthy menstrual cycle and not having optimal overall health. So your fourth sign of a healthy cycle is to have a luteal phase which is 10 to 16 days in length. The luteal phase is the second part of your menstrual cycle which is from when you ovulate to right before you start to bleed again. What this phase characterizes is that the egg lives in a follicle. This follicle develops over a hundred days and when during ovulation the egg is released from its follicle, the follicle becomes what is called the corpus luteum. This corpus luteum releases the hormone progesterone which is also so your pregnancy hormone and it stops your lining from shedding. Biologically what this allows your body to do if your egg is fertilized it will start to travel down your fallopian tubes into your uterus and it wants to embed in that lovely uterine lining you have been building up over you know your past cycle. Now obviously if you start bleeding before that happens, your egg doesn't have a uterine lining to implant in. So the corpus luteum and the release of that progesterone gives the hypothetically fertilized egg time to implant in your uterine lining, which at that point would signal to your brain to keep releasing progesterone, meaning you don't get your period and you're pregnant. And like I said, you're looking for this period to be about 10 to 16 days. It will not be longer than 16 days as your corpus luteum literally can't live longer than 16 days. But ideally you want to get as close in days in your luteal phase to that 16. Progesterone has a host of health benefits. So the longer we have this hormone in our system, the better really. And it's quite interesting because actually when you look at the sort of graph of what a menstrual cycle and hormones looks like, the progesterone in the luteal phase and estrogen in your follicle phase, so the first half of your cycle and the second half of your cycle with ovulation in the middle, they're shown as equal. But actually estrogen is about 250% on average higher than its baseline production of estrogen in your body, whereas progesterone can get as high as 1500% higher. So you can see how even just an extra day in your luteal phase can give you a massive increase in progesterone. And again, like I said, the kind of the more fertile your cycle is, the more fertile you are, the healthier your cycle is. And this is a really important aspect of that. So the fifth and last sign that I'm going to talk about that might that's an indicator of a healthy cycle is your cervical fluid or cervical mucus or discharge however you want to call it. So our body has a very clever way of working because uh, when our egg is released out of its follicle it can only live around 24 hours. Some people say 48 hours, some people say a little bit less. I would say that if you're using this for some kind of birth control method definitely stay on the safe side and go for 48 hours. Uh, and obviously your egg needs to live to be implanted. And 24 hours is a really short window of time for a full month long, sometimes for some people even longer cycle. So nature has come up with this really clever way to lengthen that fertile window. And cervical mucus is a very key part in that. So you may have noticed those parts of your cycle where maybe you wipe, this is quite TMI, but you wipe and you sort of go and you're like, oh wow, that was really slippery. Or you feel like you have to wipe multiple times because it's quite wet. Or even like when you walk around and you kind of feel like maybe you peed yourself a little bit and it's just wet and you felt like something like came out. Those can all be signs of really sort of that extra production of cervical fluid and you don't have that your whole cycle you just have that for a few days and actually that fluid mimics the fluid of a man's sperm in which it's little swimmers swim so that when sperm enters a woman and she has fertile cervical mucus the sperm can one be able to find its way to the cervix 
and into the uterus to go up and swim up to meet the egg and that fluid makes it much easier for the sperm to move and find their way and the fluid also keeps the sperm alive so sperm can live up to five days in a woman's body that is a very long time if you think about it so you could have had sex five days ago with your partner and his sperm is still in you that is a possibility so the production of cervical mucus is another really important sign of a healthy cycle again the more fertile you are the healthier your cycle in general so there's different kinds of cervical mucus the most fertile cervical fluid a woman has resembles raw egg white and it's quite stringy really slippery just imagine a raw egg white and producing this is a quite important sign of a healthy menstrual cycle. There's a lot of information you can find along about what that looks like, pictures of it, descriptions of different words. What I suggest you do, which I'll get onto later, is actually just really track what yours looks like and start to see a pattern. And then it's nice to cross-reference that with what it's meant to look like. So if you only find that maybe for one day you have quite a lot of cervical mucus, but it's nothing like egg white, that might be something to start thinking about. So I will link all the resources for you to learn about this more in the description box below. And that includes my resources, some of the things that I've learned through those resources that I've included in this video. I have been lucky enough to also be part of a workshop series organized by Spirit Woman and I will link that down below as well because I would highly recommend any woman menstruating person to do that. I also highly recommend going onto my website which I'll also link down below but it's beyouandmore.co.uk and I have a women's work page on there which has a lot more information. Also feel free to get in touch with any questions please do. I love talking Talking about this and it's a lot of information so do get in touch either in the comments or on my website there's a contact form or on Instagram all of it will be linked down below thank you so much bye